just a hack. It's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome back to Hack City. Joe DeLeon, Sean Anderson, two former college football players from the University of Rhode Island. Today we are recapping the action from week five of FCS football. Lots and lots of craziness. A lot of top teams lost this week, Sean. There are, I, I have to tell you, when I did my 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 ballot, I scrapped everything. I completely laid I had to make a I made an Excel spreadsheet that I'm now going off going forward and I remapped how I'm going about ranking teams because I, I, it's so ooh. daunting. I, I have to make mine after this. It's uh, I'm daunting. I'm praying for you. I, it it is it was difficult. It was very difficult. And I think that I've got a pretty good list going, but we're going to talk about all the stuff, the craziness. We're going to dive deep on Eastern Washington, Idaho, South Dakota State, North Dakota. Before we do that, though, Sean, can you just share a quick message from our sponsors? Yeah, if you were an FCS football better and you took, I don't know, every single underdog available and parlayed them, you're probably a millionaire after this weekend. You may be a, a multimillionaire because it was a, a crazy ass week. Uh, and if you're going to do that and you feel like you've got a, a a good idea about how a game's going to go, that's typically how my bets go. I say, oh, this this I have a good idea right now. I'm going to head to bet online. I'm going to make a wager. I'm going to enjoy my game. I'm going to eat a whole bunch of chili. That's a great day for me. That's fantastic. So combine the chili and the bet online, and you got a good Saturday. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV. That's B-L-E-A-V to receive your 50% welcome bonus in your first deposit. I know here's the thing. You can also bet on baseball and we're about to be in playoff playoff baseball. And I got a pretty good feeling that FCS football fans are also big baseball fans. It's a weird cross section, but a lot of uh, the FCS well, I guess people Craig, that I follow. Craig's a pretty like big Reds fan. Yeah. Uh, so I, I know a lot of the South Dakota state guys are Milwaukee Brewers fans. So and I think they're made the playoffs, which is it's just, Nobody wastes more talent up there than Milwaukee. Uh, maybe the Mets, but regardless, bet online where the game starts. Bet on baseball, bet on football. It's going to be fun. If you bet on the favorites for FCS football, you definitely took a bath this past weekend. Ripping us through, uh, I bet the whole box score takeaways this week is just all upset. So the first one, North Dakota State stumbles with South Dakota 24 to 19. Offense doesn't show up. I'm really in on South Dakota. They debuted on my poll. They debuted very high on my poll. I think I had them up in that 15 range. They look good. They have one of the best resumes this season, but North Dakota State's beaten up on everyone they've played. I just don't know why they didn't show up this game, and now they've got their first loss. It didn't look like they could get much of a pass rush. Uh, the South Dakota quarterback looked calm, and they they just made the big plays when they needed to make the big plays, and sometimes football games go that way. Mm. You're good. I got to drop, and this is just, I'm going to brainstorm a lot of it throughout the show, but you got to drop North Dakota State some. You got to put South Dakota there. And also, Western Carolina fans, this is a rankable win. This is a rankable win. Yes. So, when you beat when yes. you beat a top team and not that Samford after the second week of the season. Yeah. So I, it was just a good game, and it looked like South Dakota played the more complete game on offense and defense. I still hate that Heath guy. That Heath guy is my least favorite guy on the internet. That, don't don't shit talk me for two weeks, calling me a clown and an idiot, and then now all of a sudden start quote tweeting me like, "Ah, oh, look, you put Western Carolina in the top ten. Shut the hell up, Heath. You go to hell, Heath. <laughs> God. Well, William and Mary lost to Elon fourteen to six. I hate that Heath guy. I if no, if I see him in person, we're also off the alternating. It, it's <laughs> we're off the alternating. It's on site if I see Heath in person, and his new <laughs> profile picture is worse than the one before. The worst guy on the internet. The worst guy on the internet. It's a. It's one of those Funko Pops, uh, or not Funko, but whatever the the stupid little plastic things with the big heads, the little action figures. Oh yeah, that is a Funko Pop. Way to go! Yeah, you are a nerd. William and Mary loses to Elon, fourteen to six. Uh, this is just kind of proof to what I thought was going to happen eventually. I think we just started to see weekly that William and Mary was showing signs of weakness, and they showed it. Elon made their way onto my ballot, or they're one of the first teams that just missed it. Um, but yeah, pretty crazy loss. CAA continues to eat its own. Yeah, the CAA went bonkers this week. I might do a show with Ryan Roberts just recapping it because he wants to talk some FCS football. Uh, but this this was just a head-scratcher game. Elon's put together a pretty good year so far, though. 
Uh, they had a weird loss to Gardner Webb. Got right at, got right after that. Took care of business against NCA and T. I mm. uh, had a good win against a good Campbell team. Recognizing Campbell is a good team in the CAA. They had a huge, and we'll get to more Campbell. But Elon's put uh, put together three really solid wins. Three wins that you have to say is rankable. William Mary not bad enough, I think, to slide enough uh, off off the ballot by any means. But odd, 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 odd game and odd loss to Elon when you're supposed to be the the, the principal crown jewel of the CAA. I'm like 90% sure there's some dude on his balcony who's just staring at me. I, uh, you, like, What do you think this looks like, my setup from a distance from the opposite I told you, apartment? I told you, it looked like a American. So you got an American psycho setup. Okay. I walked okay. in and I saw you had the. All the, right. <sighs> Holy Cross loses to Harvard 38 to 28. This one's really tough, man, because I really was starting to. I was really starting to turn the corner on Holy Cross. I was starting to really like them. And. You go and lose to Harvard. Harvard, Harvard's Harvard. Harvard They're also nothing. at times airing it out on Holy Cross, whereas Harvard was a run dominant offense uh, for most of the 2010s, uh, at least since we were playing. Odd, a, a just crazy ass loss for Holy Cross to go up and, and put their heart and soul in, into a game where they should have beat BC and they come back and lose to, to, to Harvard. Stop playing Massachusetts teams then, man. Stop doing it. Bad, bad. You're not good at it. You're you're a good team. Matthew Luke is a dog. But you Apparently, can't I don't lose have anybody Harvard. else. You can't yeah, lose you can't, to Harvard. Can't lose to Harvard. Uh, Sac State narrowly survived in a close one over NAU, thirty-one to thirty. NAU is a little better than I think some who people want to give credit they? for. The, who the I hell got no NAU goddamn idea. NAU is just running roughshod right now, and they are just creating the havoc. And and for me, I can respect that. But right now, I'm still left questions of who the hell they think they are messing with everything all the time. UNH laid an early egg, multiple early eggs as they fall to Towson in overtime, 54 to 51. I'm kind of out on UNH. I was all excited about them. They're still yeah. rankable, but man, they have an uphill battle to climb back into things. Towson is not a good football program and UNH was supposedly a good football program and you let Towson put 54 points on you. That makes you drop in a poll and that makes people doubt what the hell they were watching in early September because UNH looked like a, a real competitor in the CAA and now it looks like, oh, the CAA is just doing their bit where everybody hates each other and, and it's just going to just going to spoil everything. Let's see. Let's see. Everything's going to be different in November also. Uh, NCCU. Beats Campbell, pretty big win, 49 to 48. I moved them up because I thought that that was a really nice win for them yeah. to pull off. Um, they continue to look really strong, man. They're, they're going to stay on my poll until they lose a game, and they'll probably still stick around as long as it's not a bad loss. Yeah, them and FAMU hate to bunch them together. The, the two main HBCU representatives on my poll, they're not moving until they lose because FAMU keeps winning and NCCU yeah. keeps winning. And this was a very solid win. And there might be an NCCU player during fat stats that will be featured. Oh. Somebody went ballistic is what I'm going to say. I know who won it for me already. I don't even, I haven't even looked at the other ones that you picked. Okay. And then lastly, you and I beats Youngstown 44 to 41. Oh man, that one's weird for me. I, you know what I did? I just did the old switcheroo. I took Youngstown out and I put you and I in, and it was just like, okay, that's <laughs> easy. Switcheroo also. So I think I just, I might have just put Youngstown on it because uh, they had been rolling and and cultivating a good uh, amount of wins and, and and solid stringing them together. And then you and I says, hey, we're still you and I, buddy. Uh, get the hell out of here. Uh, huge win. A, a lot of points this weekend. Ton of points. You and I. Shocking to see them putting up 44. Don't know the last time I've seen them do that. Maybe since if they played Lamar, because everyone puts 70 points on Lamar or Drake. Uh, but other than that, I mean, Youngstown State is not a slouch, and that is a good victory for you and I. All right, let's talk about these big games. Idaho gets the victory against Eastern Washington, 44 to 36. Iwu was out, was without Vesperis, their starting quarterback. Jared Taylor steps in. God, he could not throw the football. Oh, my God, he could not throw the football. 10 for 23 for 92 yards. But God, could he run the damn ball? He yeah. runs for 22 for 121 and two touchdowns. He really killed Idaho's defense with his legs. He was a big reason that kept him in this thing. Uh, Justice Jackson, I don't know if there was like an injury or something that I missed. Um, the four carries for nine yards is weird. 
It's really weird that they just said, you know, what, we're not going to feed him. But th- overall, you know, you will put up some good fight despite not having their guy. I, it's almost like the Kansas Texas game without Jalen Daniels. I wonder what the score could have been if Bis- if Bis- Bisparis was available. Yeah, this Idaho good for Idaho. This is a good win. This Idaho is legit. Nobody can say Idaho is not legit right now. Eastern Washington is the real tricky uh, factor in this game. They are the one that is providing some headaches because with a backup quarterback, they still put up 36 points and they were close to beating Idaho. It's not just putting up 36 points with a, with a, with, with, with secondary formations and alignments and calls and new play call, new, new, new dude, new dude leading the show, putting up 36 points with him is good, but you did that against Idaho, who is a tank right now in the FCS, like uh, just rolling over people, having a great season. Talk about a wagon. Yeah, definitely Idaho Vandal wagon. And they, and Iwo gave them a game. And I was saying last week, I think Eastern Washington is still a good team. I I, I might have to double down on that because I don't know how many they more are. games they win. They could keep losing games. But that will not stop me from saying that Eastern Washington is a good football team. They are. Next year, they really might be super dynamic and and, and be a real competitor with another year of Vesperis. Given he's, I don't know if he, I I don't know if he's a senior or not. Uh, but if he is, regardless, this team is trending up. It's hard to trend up in a loss to a very good Idaho team. But you're you're trending mm. up, Iwu. I still think that you're a good team. Iwu might have had one of the worst schedules it's this year because hideous. they get Idaho state, which is going to be a nice rebound game, but then they have Weber Portland state's winnable Cal Poly's very easily winnable. And then they wrap with Montana state and Northern Arizona. Normally when you start an early stretch of the year with all these difficult opponents, it usually frees up the rest of the season. That's not happening for Eastern Washington, which is tough. I, I'm rooting for him. I think that Vesperis comes back. I don't know what his injury situation is because it was kind of a late scratch. Maybe it's just like a lingering issue that wasn't good by game day kind of, kind of thing. To talk about Idaho, though, Sean, yeah, there's yeah. Could continue to impress me. And, and one of the reasons that they impress me is that Giovanni McCoy has been the star for them. Doesn't play that great. Eight for 18, 128 yards, touchdown, interception. One of his worst games this year. And despite that, they pivoted. That to me is the sign of good coaching and a good roster that you can pivot and move in a different direction and be successful in that different direction. They ran like hell. Anthony Woods, Nick Romano go for over 300 yards on the ground. They ran all over them. That physicality and the long runs that they were able to create, that kind of stuff is going to help them down the line in the other difficult games in their schedule. Yeah, they only had eight completions, tried to throw it 18 times. That's not an inspiring line if you That's just That's a heavy hear it. pivot. <laughs> yeah. If you're just hearing that randomly and you, you're talking to your buddy, hey, how'd so-and-so do a quarterback? He was eight for 18. Gosh, they must have gotten crushed. No, no. Their normal quarterback guy that, that that's really good and is normally completing more and is more dynamic, it didn't matter. Uh, the offense just changed it up a little bit and they ran their asses off and, and, and won and still put up 44 points and decided, we're just going to run over you. We're just going to run over you. Nobody on Idaho averaged less than 5.5 yards a carry. G- Giovanni McCoy being the, the lowest with 5.5. Giovanni. Four, Giovanni, geez, pardon me. Getting ahead of myself, getting fired up. But it's impressive to, to show that you can do it on both sides because you don't need to be picking them apart uh, through the air. It, it, it's nice, but if you can put up 300 yards, like what has North Dakota State been doing for the last uh, 15 years? This. Run the damn ball. This. I know there's exceptions in the Trey Lance years and the, the the Carson Wentz years, but still they were running the ball like hell. Well, we know where Eck came from. Eck came from South Dakota State. And look, I'm going to be, be honest, FCS fans out there, get mad at this if you really want to. But it feels like I'm watching a South Dakota State type team, one that's developing into a South Dakota State type They're building team. building it up. Defensively, they need some improvements. Giving up 36 points, and some of that was kind of like late pointage is not great, but to run the ball as effectively as they did and to be as physical as they were, it feels like a South Dakota State team. Yeah, it's it's pretty 
And it's creative, at, too, the it, way that they're running the ball. It's not like just halfback dive, under center. It's a lot of different And if you're building a team, you say, like hey, come to my program. You hire me. I'm going to build you a winner. That's who you're replicating right now. You're replicating South, uh, South Dakota State, or you're saying, get me to – crazy quirked up athletes that can play quarterback and I'll build just Montana state. But you, you find those kids in the mines. You can't do that on the East coast. I don't think. So here's what I'm learning. We need to build a mine in Rhode yeah, Island. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. And are there any mines in Rhode Island? They need one. We need the a Rhode Island need a, needs a mine. We need a mine in Rhode Island. Uh, or South or they need some more kids to, to get out and, and start fishing. You know, do do some real long, hard fishing hours. The kids yearn the mines, Sean. <laughs> South Dakota right. State beats North Dakota in an ass whooping 42, 42 to 21. Dude, I watched this game and I am so impressed. And some people were a little irked by my comment on Twitter, Colin being one of them, that I was saying that South Dakota State is clear and, clear and far and away after all of these upsets, the best team in the FCS right now. Like it is so clearly apparent. They beat Montana State. That was their toughest game. And they're getting challenged by other ranked teams and they're beating the crap out of them. This is a dominant win over a good North Dakota team. North Dakota showed some good stuff, but South Dakota State did their deal where they smothered in coverage. Like there were no open passing lanes to throw the ball. There just was no room to throw the ball. There was such tight coverage. And even if the ball was completed, they were bringing guys down as soon as they caught the ball. There was no yak available. The biggest thing too, the pass rush was all over. Uh, Schuster was all up in his grill. No time to operate. Tons of pressures, a couple sacks that they produced. The biggest thing for me is only 68 yards rushing allowed. That is an ass whooping. And South Dakota State's going to keep doing it. Yeah, they are really rolling, and I think they'll roll over Illinois State next week. Now, are we still going? We're still going, right? October 14th? Yeah. Why wouldn't we? Uh, I just had to confirm. I just wanted to confirm again. Yeah, two weeks away, we get to see them play you and I. I mean, if anyone cancels, it's going to be you. It could be. Why would I cancel? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just trying to be mean. What, that's what I thought. Just, just a jerk. Uh, regardless, uh, you and I is going to be their, their next real test. The Montana State game was a fantastic early taste of what we would get to see when they were facing real pressure uh, from another team. You and I might push them. You and I might push them. They they will have to buckle it up because that team will give them both ends. They'll run it and they'll pass it. And Theo Day, if he's having a good Theo Day day, then South Dakota State is going to have to have a good South Dakota State day. If it's a day for Theo Day to have a day. Exactly. Yes. Then it will be the day. Hmm. That Theo Day is recognized as I'm I'm all out of juice on that you're, one. That you're one onto something. You're onto something there though. What a day to have a day and be mm. Theo Day. We should put that on a t shirt. Sure. I, I almost don't even I, I wish I had taken the time to to dig in on the North Dakota State South Dakota game a little bit more, but I wanted to take the time to talk about the South Dakota North Dakota game because we previewed it. I just think it's so telling. This game is so, so telling for who South Dakota State is. I feel like there's always going to be people who try to say, like, are, are they really that good? Yes. Yes, they are. They're they legit. really are that good. This is yeah. one of the best FCS teams I've seen over the past couple of years. They're Not really the best, dominant. One of the best. Uh, and I think, I believe, I think it's the first time a South Dakota State player has been on Fat Stats this year because they've just been spreading the ball out all oh. over the place. Yeah. Fat Stats, by the way, would you care to... You care to read that to us? Yeah, that's that's what the transition was going to be. Fat stats, fat stats. Let's get on the fat stats. Let's just do it. Uh, Yale quarterback Nolan Grooms, twenty nine for thirty eight, three hundred sixty three yards, four touchdowns. He also carried the ball nine times and uh, for eighty seven rushing yards. So mm. let's quick math it into four fifty. Uh, and four touchdowns. So that's pretty fat. I'll give it to him. Sanford quarterback Michael Ayers back on the list. Weird ass team. That's fine. He was 42 for 50. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 399 pass yards, one passing touchdown, two picks, two rushing touchdowns, and he also had negative 36 rushing yards. So call that. Call it fat. Call it what uh, undeserving. But if you have that many numbers that deserve to be on this list, then I'm going to put you on it. West Carolina running back 
forgot to put in the name. Well, he had 118 <laughs> rushes, 167 yards, five touchdowns. Ain't that convenient? Uh, oh, oh, you did that on purpose. Gracious. I did not. Ooh, no, it was Desmond Reed. Desmond Reed, 167 yards, five touchdowns. Very good. Very good, Desmond Reed. Good win. I'm sorry your fans are so terrible. Uh, you and I. No, Keith is just terrible. I don't know. The Catamount Sports Network gives me a Keith's little a too dick. much guff. Uh, <laughs> you and I quarterback Theo Day, 21 for 29, 337, four touchdowns, one pick, one rush touchdown. What a day. And comparing with Michael Ayers. What a day. Only, only negative 26 rushing yards. What a day. All right, next quarterback. Uh, Towson quarterback Nathan Kent, 21 for 34, 252 mm. yards, five touchdowns. Mm. Was one pick, seven rushes for 68 oh. rushing yards. So we'll quick math it at about 315 around that range, maybe 325 mm. touchdowns for Kent and a turnover. South, South Dakota State running back Isaiah Davis, 16 mm. carries, 132 yards, three rush mm. touchdowns. Three catches for 18 yards, making it six quick maths. Ooh. Six yards a catch. I swear to God, everything that is pure and holy. <laughs> Main quarterback, Derek Robertson, 25 for 30, 394 yards, five touchdowns. Five Robertson. Touchdowns. Robertson. I said no, Robertson. I, you said Roberts. No Hold relation to play. Ryan Roberts. I'm sorry. I was, I was bracing myself for the next noise that I heard. Main quarterback, Derek Robertson. 25 for 30, 394 yards, five touchdowns. I'm sure Tyler Cruz had a fun one with that. Idaho running back Anthony Woods. I bet if wait, I bet if you ask Tyler Cruz who the starting quarterback is for Maine, he's got no uh, clue. No, he's idea. got a clue. He's got a clue. He's just more busy with Cooper no, Flag. He doesn't. Uh Idaho running back Anthony Woods, 24 carries, 183 yards, five touchdowns on the ground. Oh. Mm. Campbell wide receiver Jalen Kelsey. Uh, seven catches, 172 yards, two huh. touchdowns. I mean, I, you know what? I'll yeah. give it for the amount yeah. of catches to yards. Montana State. Uh, no, I'm skipping now. Uh, NCCU uh, quarterback Davius Richard, uh, 21 for 34, 265 yards through the air and mm. a touchdown. Ah, oh, it's not too bad. You know, yeah. they had a big win versus Campbell, but they had 21 carries, 86 yards, and four oh. rushing touchdowns. So oh. a total of five to shut the hell up, dog. I got three more dudes. <laughs> and here's what's going to happen. I'm going to be like, Joe, who's your fat stat? And then uh, and you'll be like, I don't know. I'll just pick whoever. Take this time. No, and I know who, who I want. Yeah. Hey, uh, this is active listening. I am actively listening to you. That's yeah, what's happening you're right being now. You're an active jackass. That's what you're Normal- doing. <laughs> All right, continue. Sorry. <laughs> Montana State quarterback Sean Chambers, 14 for 21 passing, 143 yards, three touchdowns. He also yeah. carried the rock four times for 118 yards and one touchdown. So let's do some quick maths again. Uh, averaging like 25, 26 yards a carry. Four total touchdowns over 200 yards, like 250. So pretty good. Indiana State running back Plez Lawrence, 29 carries, 203 yards, three Plez? touchdowns. Plez. Stephen F. Austin, quarterback Brian cool Maurer, name. 30 for 50, 342 yards, five touchdowns, one I was pick. A, I thought it was a typing error. No. Maurer's, yeah, that's okay. There, it's why, 50 passing attempts. It, once you get in the 30 territory, I think it's time to shut it down. I kind of agree with you. I think when you get to 50, you're like, hey, this offense is not operating as it should. Who's your fat stat? My fat stat. Idaho Vandal running back, Anthony Woods. Five touchdowns? Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, you had a good day. What a day to have a day and not be Theo Day. (sighs) You're going to get a little little punchy. I could tell. Uh, I I drank a a whole bottle of wine last night after that Notre Dame game. My brain. (laughs) <laughs> I hadn't drank in two months, and my brain has not been operating today. Sure, it's sure. On vacation. Why would it? Next, that's why all the, the noises were coming out. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Towson quarterback Nathan Kent. That's a, that's a huge performance and a huge win for them. Uh, and then he was just the offense. So that is good. That is good. Two good fat stats. Plenty of action to choose from. Uh, I guess we'll just sign it off. Why wouldn't we? Hack City, Jody Leon. Who would have thought Anderson, there'd be Jody a day Leon, where Theo Anderson Day. Radio. Does not remember sure to make sure to like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Turn your notifications on because we're going to have the FCS and FBS preview. Going to try to do a poll show this week for everybody to check it out. 
big week FCS coming at you. Talk to you later.